What is up guys and welcome back to episode number 143 now of the career mode. In today's earlier episode at 4pm I was talking about uh, the England game mode to come because I'm recording this on Sunday evening which is uh, the England games at 5 o'clock and as I'm recording this it's now 4pm. Team news has just come in for England. If you watched my earlier video you would have known I said I was wanting Jermaine Defoe to start that game and thankfully he is starting for England. So I just thought I'd go on a bit of a tangent there before we move into today's properly episode because it's always nice to talk about real football and of course I was saying how much I wanted Jermaine Defoe to start in the episode earlier on and thankfully he is starting today so that's one of my wishes already done and ticked off. So now guys we'll go into today's episode and look to uh, get ourselves underway in terms of where we currently are. We're approaching the next round of the Champions League or the first knockout round which we will be taking on Schalke. So as I said before I'm looking quite forward to that. Um, whether or not it'll be this episode or the next episode or the episode after that, I can't quite remember. I know it's not in this episode, but uh, I, I'm not sure if it's in the next one or the one after that. But I know for sure we've certainly got that game coming up against them in the near future. And the first leg will be, hopefully, um, pretty much over and done with after the first leg. That's what I'm hoping for. If we're going to go on to win this, we need to be beating teams like Schalke. No disrespect to them. Uh, you know, sort of comfortably. We need to be getting the first leg out of the way and knowing that we have, I guess, a goal advantage at least. Away goal, I guess, because we are playing at... Schalke in the first leg so we do need that away goal and it will be very nice to get it so you have to see if we do manage to do that in the near future but today guys a few more games in the league for you to feast your eyes upon and the first of which comes here at the hands of Chivo Verona we've already beaten them once if you remember we beat them in I do believe the cup was it the quarterfinals we played in when we beat them I think it was the quarterfinals um so we've already played them once in the last I guess couple of episodes so now we're playing them again this time in the league though so this could be different to how we played against them in the Cup, because obviously the Cup game was a, a semi-decent team as opposed to um, our strongest eleven. Um, because I actually named a weaker team for that one on the grounds that I knew it was the Cup game. And so I wanted to make sure I had the strongest team possible for this, uh, you know, Cup, or the League feature, sorry. And the thing is, guys, we've won every game but one in the League. So the League title, I'd say, you can pretty much say is pretty much ours already here. And we went, won the lot inside four minutes. Taliso here, low driven shot. I'm very disappointed, and I'll tell you why I'm disappointed. The keepers in this game, I know the low driven shots are so broken, but the other side of it, guys, it's not that difficult to make this save. Look at this. Taliso with a low driven shot. It's not completely in the corner, and if he just decides to actually get his foot out to the, you know, the left-hand side there, he's going to save that. And I don't know what he's thinking, but we took the lead regardless there. It was, you know, I'll tell you what, it is what it is. Sometimes you get these sort of goals where you think, I have no idea what the keeper's thinking. And sometimes you have the, you know, goalkeepers where they save, uh, you know, sort of five, ten different shots a game in which they should all be going in. But Taliso there with the first goal inside the first five minutes. And then, guys, we had another chance 12 minutes in this time. We went down the letter right inside with Gabriel, gives it into Kimmich, Kimmich into uh, Rashford, Rashford to Taliso. A carbon copy of the first goal of the game today. We grabbed the second. Taliso once again, this time though with the finesse, oh, the low driven shot. It was a much better strike when in the, actually in the corner this time rather than just going right next to the goalkeeper. But to say the least, he conceded two carbon copies of each other in the first 14 minutes of the game. I was kind of like, you know, I was thinking, yeah, it's great and all, but the keeper must be kicking himself. Like, seriously, Taliso getting in that position twice as well. You have to question the defenders. How was a centre midfielder being able to run through the same place twice in a row and get away with it on both occasions and score? You know, if that was my defenders, I say, you know, I'd be a very, very frustrated manager. But the thing is, we have got that quality on the pitch right now that every time I get the ball, I know for a fact I'm going to have runners off it. And that's what Taliso did there for the opening two goals of the game. So it looks as if he could have been on a hat-trick here, guys. And there's still a long, long time to go in this one. Still 75 minutes or so left in this game for him to try and get the hat-trick. And we had another chance here, 19 minutes in. Gabriel, what a strike this one is. Right into the top corner, but it came back off of the bar, unfortunately. It would have been an absolute worldie from Gabriel there, as he would have got, I think, his first Inter Milan goal. But... 34 minutes in, we then tried something else here. Kimmich down the left as I did cut it back inside to Varela. Varela to Dembele, Dembele to curl one. And it came back off the bar as well. So unfortunately, two world-class strikes from two world-class players didn't result in a goal on either occasion there. Both of which coming off the crossbar. But into the 90th minute we went. Renato Sanchez wanted to get in on the act here. Takes a strike on, low driven shot straight at the keeper. And then the keeper finally makes a phenomenal save on that occasion with the second save. Getting back up from the original one there. To make the second save from the rebounded effort from Sanchez. Great stop from the keeper on that occasion. But in all honesty, the damage is already done. You know, Toledo had already scored twice. And uh, if those two early goals didn't go in. And the defenders actually woke up from the first one. Maybe Chivo Verona had a chance in this one. But you can see 90 minutes on the clock here, guys. That was all the game had in store. 2-0 victory. Three points on the board. And like I said, 
if they didn't get, I guess, carbon copies of both of the goals there, and if they didn't give the second one up, there was still potential for them to come back in that game. You know, it was only early doors, it was five minutes in, until we obviously got the second one in around 12 minutes, so... I didn't know what to make of that, if I'm being completely but you can see the transfers down the bottom right of your screen. Verratti's gone to Bayern Munich, Yanazai has gone to Barcelona. I also have accidentally forgotten to show you, we put an offer, oh wait, oh yeah, we put an offer in for Hakan Chanaloglu there, 30.5 million. I forgot to show you as originally putting in the offer. The reason I went for this guy, even though it's another series coming to a close at the back end of this season, is because we don't actually have a free kick specialist in the team. And I thought, you know what, screw it, let's get Hakan into the club. He's got like one of the best free kicks on the game. And so it'd be interesting, actually, if we can actually get a free kick specialist in. And you can see he does accept his contract. So we have Hack and Channel Oglu coming into the team for this final, you know, sort of six months here in this series. You know, he's not the highest uh, sort of overall for a midfielder, but certainly, guys, I'm hoping he can uh, he can do a damage from set pieces, certainly. I know that for sure. So I'm hoping he can have that sort of an impact, even if it's just off of the bench. But one thing I've noted about him, he's actually got very low stamina. And the problem with that is he gets, like, kind of dead after the 60 minute mark and so you have to sub him out or just play with him basically without any legs because you just can't run after that point so it swings and roundabouts with him I mean he's great from set pieces he's got an absolute world of a long shot as well it's just as I say he gets so tired in games so quickly so it's a bit frustrating but you can see guys sold on a couple of players there as well to add to a budget in which we're not going to be spending if I'm being completely honest with you but still they're not going to game time so why not sell them on is the, uh, the excuse there and you can see as well, we're taking on Napoli here for the same game in this one. Renato Sanchez gets us off to a decent start with an opening goal inside 10 minutes there. He then gets a yellow card inside the 40th minute, then proceeds to get sent off in the 48th before Gabbiadini does in fact equalise for Napoli, Napoli here in the 54th. So at that point, I am thinking, please don't lose, guys. Just hold out until the 90th minute, get a 1-1 draw. But we did actually steal it. A 2-1 victory there as Dembele managed to get the goal in the 89th minute. Fantastic play from him to grab himself the goal and grab us the three points as well. Because that could have gone sour for us once Sanchez did in fact receive that second yellow and the red card. Gabbiadini did in fact equalise in that one. So it could have been worse for us. But still, we managed to come away with the victory in that one before we went into the uh, final game of today's episode in which we'll be taking on Palermo here. The reason I didn't play the Napoli one is because I'm going to go for form nowadays. If I'm simming games that I think are wins, it's because of form. And Palermo right now are sat, I do believe, within the top six or maybe even top eight. So... Right now, in terms of form, they're currently doing better than Napoli, so I felt as though playing this one is justified here against Palermo because they're doing pretty well for themselves, and so it's probably going to be quite a tough test, this one. Uh, that's what my kind of thought process is. And you can see how Kanchan does, in fact, start today as well. I wanted to give him a start as soon as I get the players in. That's normally what I do whenever I make a transfer signing. I always go ahead and decide that I'm going to start the players. And I understand, guys, as well, leaving, you know, sort of decisions over to you guys for players to bring in and stuff like that would be really cool to do. But the only issue is, with this being the last series, or the last season, I'm not that interested in, in making too many signings because the series is done after this. And I want to make sure that I have, you guys have as much an input as possible. So when we start a new career mode, which remember that is down the line, you will have the most input in that. I'll be, uh, most of the decisions will be coming over to you guys. I'll compile a short list of players that I think are going to be interesting, choose my favourites, and then I'll ask you guys to pick based on that. So stick around as well because you guys have a lot of input on the channel. And that's something that I always adore from you guys. You guys leave me so many comments and stuff. And it's so cool to see that you guys are always interested in what's going on. And uh, like I said, if you want to follow me on social links, links are in the description below. I'm most active on Snapchat rather than Twitter because I spend, I guess, more time on my phone. And Twitter on the phone's quite... In well, you can use it still, but still, Snapchat's kind of like a bit more personal in that sense, isn't it? So if you want to follow me on there, links are in the description below. I'm also looking to stream as well, so my Twitch is in the description as well for the near future at some point if I ever get around to streaming. But you can see, guys... Back to the gameplay today, 30 minutes on the clock here, we created our first chance, Vincenzini with it, down the left hand side, great ball to the back post, says Inaki Williams, get your end on that, and he does just that, Inaki Williams with the opening goal of the game via a fantastic crossing honestly from Vincenzini, what a ball that was, straight across the face of the corridor uncertainty, keeper doesn't come for it, and that was 1-0, Inaki Williams arriving at the back stick there after the defender was close to sliding and reaching the ball, didn't manage to do it. We took the lead here and it started off brilliantly for us. But I want to just say credit to Vincenzini there because that was tremendous. What a great pass from him. Without that ball, there would be of no, uh, you know, there'd be no goal in that situation. No way in hell would that have, uh, have ended up in the back of the net. But wonderful ball met very well at the back post by Anaki Williams. So we got off to the, you know, a good start in this one inside 30 minutes getting the lead here. But Palermo did have a chance themselves here as they came forward. I gave the ball away cheaply here. Very, very sloppy from me. They take a strike on because I just couldn't get a man highlighted to get over to make the tackle quickly. And it actually comes back off the post there. So that could have been dangerous for us. It could have been 1-1. And uh, as much as um, 
or as quickly as we actually took the lead there. So potentially, we, you know, Palermo could have been back in this one. But we did get ourselves a free kick quite far out on this occasion, 40 minutes in. Hakan is now on the pitch. So get a chance to show you what he can do from his free kicks here as he looks to drive one goalwards. Gets it to the bottom corner. Keeper makes a fantastic save, though. So 40 minutes on the clock there. Good stop from the Palermo goalkeeper. Denies hack and the opening goal from a very, very long way out. But Fosu Mensa has something to say about that. And that is just world class. What a finish this is from Timothy Fosu Mensa. If you don't know already, he's in the Road to Glory Korean mode. If you haven't watched it, go ahead and watch it. It came out 4 p.m. today. And honestly, guys, Fosu Mensa is world class. He can play centre-back, he can play right-back, he can play centre-mid, he can play centre-defensive mid. And at push, even if you wanted to, I would say you could play him at cam. But the thing is, he's so versatile, and that's one thing I like about players is when they're so versatile. And he can hit a cracker of a shot as well. If you remember back to uh, when we played against Manchester United, of course, his former, his former team, he scored a worldie in that game as well. So he is capable of striking them, and it's just all about whether or not you're willing to take it on there. I was willing there. We went 2-0 up. So it worked out in the favour, 42 minutes on the clock. We came back second half here, 60 minutes in now. Chanaloglu on the ball, gave it off to Kimmich. Kimmich into Rashford. Rashford running through on goal. Low driven shot. It is 3-0, and that is pretty much game. When I got 3-0 up in this situation, I was thinking, yep, yeah, no matter what Palermo do now, if I throw this away, I am so shocking. So I was not expecting to throw it away, but that's pretty much it, guys. Honestly, if you go 3-0 up in a game, you should be able to close it out and you should be able to see it out. So I was expecting to do that as well, but he got better for us. 76 minutes in, we were all over him at this point. Rashford running through, gives it to Vincenzini, back to Rashford. Rashford now into Chanaloglu. Chanaloglu runs past his man, takes a low-driven strike on. Keeper gets a very strong hand to it here. It comes back off of the inside of the post. And ends up crossing the line for 4-0. So with about 10 or so, or 12 minutes to play now in this one here, Palermo were pretty much down and out. They just was waiting for the 90th minute whistle. They were waiting for the whistle to just go and end their pain and suffering in this game. They got absolutely battered. And in all honesty, guys, it wasn't a game in which I felt as though they were in. I mean, yes, they hit the post in the first half and it could have made it 1-1. But after that... They were never in the game. We dominated them on all parts of the field. And that is why we ran out outright winners at four goals to nil. Fantastic performance from the rest of the boys. And it's always nice to see that, like I say, you can call upon the squad depth that you have in the club here as Chanelogu celebrates. Oh, wait, no, that's Vincenzini. Sorry. <laughs> that's Vincenzini, not Chanelogu. But, um, yeah, Fosu Mensa, Vincenzini celebrating. Very happy with themselves in that occasion. Both of them played exceptionally well. Chanelogu there scoring on his debut as well. So a great way to end the episode off and that is going to be it from me if you have enjoyed this episode guys i'd appreciate it like rain as always thank you all for your continued support on the channel you guys are absolutely immense for everything you do and i appreciate everything like i said if you want to follow me on any of my social links they are all in the description as per usual if you enjoyed this video leave a like and i will catch you all with another video from 4 p.m tomorrow stay tuned don't miss it adios